guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Tremor. Tremor is a game for two to four players. It takes 30 to 60 minutes. It's made by Curly Bros Games and you are going to be a animal spirit guide. Well, the earth has become destroyed due to us humans uh, manipulating the atmosphere and whatnot causing disaster. Basically, tremors are now occupying the land, the rainforests are arid wastelands, and uh, everywhere else is just basically desert. So you have now arisen, and you're trying to guide your specific species from one area of, one of the continent to another to a safe and more habitable space. And you are tr objectively trying to get from one end of the board to the other before the, any of the other animals are uh, capable of doing so. And if you can do that first before anybody else, you're going to win the game. However, there's a lot of different things that are going to cause you some trouble. First of all, there's going to be earthquakes and tremors that will shake the ground, flipping over tiles and whatnot, as well as there's going to be things your opponents are going to do. So, for instance, a cyclone could happen or a tornado could happen, in which you're going to move the tiles as well. On your turn, you're going to get to simply move, flipping tiles over to gain certain resources, per se, to cause conflict with your opposing animal species, as well as you'll be able to rotate tiles to give your own species a better leg up on getting across the board. Just be careful because as the game progresses it might be likely that things will switch up and change the way or the flow of the game and make it more difficult for you to progress. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look down below at the game Tremor. I'll show you a basic idea of how to play it, what the round consists of, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So here we have a two-player game of Tremor and as you can see there is a board that you set up with each player tile on one side of it and if you are a color you are trying to get to the other side that has your color. So for instance if you are the marsh crocodile you are here trying to get to your color which is green on this side and then the wild yaks are trying to get to the other side of the board these two are relevant when you play a three or four player game you're simply going to be traversing as red to purple and as uh, as red to per uh, sorry as red to red and as purple to purple here you're also going to get these die here, which will be rolling at the end of each turn that will allow you to place your little climate tokens or your little, little squares here and place them into these little triangle areas here, which has a little bit of an area control area, which will allow you to do certain disasters like volcano or to tsunami or flood or cyclone. So, for instance, it's just color to color and you'll do whatever it says there based on the orientations that it allows you to do so. There's additional characters here with their own types of current tokens as well as their own little chits that have a front and a back and a front and a back player. So you could either be an orangutan or you could be a chameleon. They have a bunch of different choices here. You can be an emperor penguin or an Arabian camel. So for, you know, as for instance, you're also then going to get a five by five grid here. Everything is going to start face down except for this little tile here in the middle. And of course the ones on the adjacent sides here, the far ends. And in addition, each player is going to be able to flip over two tiles. And if you flip over an oasis, you flip over another tile. So for instance, the marsh crocodiles here, they uh, flipped over these three tiles here, starting with these two. Then he had an extra tile flip over, which are these spaces here. And the marsh tile went ahead, marsh crocodile went ahead and chose the yellow. So he placed one on the yellow and then one on this pink one over here. And then over here, which is the wild yak, they went ahead and placed on, let's say the yellow over here. And then let's go ahead and say the red over here. You can choose one of either or of the different colors here. Additionally, each character is going to get an initiative, which is right here, and it'll tell you uh, the lowest initiative will start in the one space, the second lowest in the two, and then three in a four player game. So in this case, two goes to the one and the three will go to the two, which will allow you to uh, place your tokens down when you ignite disasters. These tokens also have a front and a back. So in this case, the yaks will be on this side here. And you'll be placing them down here when you ignite disasters, disasters to get these climate cards, which you start with two. Crocodiles are going to get to start with two additional cards. They're going to get to choose two of these and place two down on the bottom of the deck, giving you a little bit more versatility as far as choosing which climate cards to play during the game. While wild yaks are able to move across debris that uh, have tiles that are landslide tiles. So for instance, here you can actually move across when normally you couldn't because of this black layer here. As long as it has a landslide icon or a color on this tile here, you can go ahead and move through these specific tiles here. Additionally, crocodiles, whenever they draw an extra additional climate card from this area here, they'll get to draw two and choose one. 
All right, so let's go ahead and start the game off. Uh, we know, for instance, that we're going to be starting on one side and trying to get to the other side. So when we look, we can actually take a look at the player aid, and it tells us that we have three actions. One being to traverse, meaning we can move from one space to another. The other one being to tectonic twist, which will allow us to move any tile we want in a 90 degree fashion, uh, either going left or right. So for instance, I can do this or I can do this, allowing us to move. So I'll go ahead and move this just like that. And then we can also go ahead and explore our forecast. To explore, we simply take a tile and flip it over. And then we're going to place one of our tokens on either color. So for instance, I'll go ahead and choose dark blue and place my token right there. And after we have done that, we went ahead and moved. We've rotated. We've also went ahead and scouted, which we chose to explore. If we didn't want to explore, we could forecast, which is just simply allowing us to place one of these tokens uh, on any of these colors here, on any of the little triangles here, which will allow us to hopefully be able to do one of our special abilities on the opposite side of the board. When our turn is ending, we're going to simply take these two die here and roll them, and then we're going to place two tokens, one on each of the different colors here, and in this case, we can go ahead and just do something like that, covering this little triangle up. Whenever we cover a triangle fully, we'll take off all of the cubes, and then we're going to enact the ability. And in this case, we are going to be looking at the board diagram here, and it says, Volcano. Volcano will allow us to uh, basically block certain tiles off. We will use our color tokens here, and based on the indication of how it's turned, we're going to be able to place either one right here, or we can place it right here, based on how it says we can do so, and we're going to basically block those tiles off, meaning that they can't be rotated, and I don't think they can even be walked on as well. So it's a good way of preventing players from messing with tiles on the board. Uh, also, when we do that, we're going to take one of our tokens and place it on this little track here, indicating that we're moving up uh, this little uh, earthquake track. When it hits seven for a two-player game, that's when an earthquake is going to occur, and we're also going to draw a card based on whatever this little token is on. So in this case, we'll draw a one. And if we get to seven here, it'll move down to five, allowing us to draw two card, then finally three, back to five, back to seven. So the game is going to constantly be having us draw cards and have things happen. Earthquakes will also shift the board around, as well as potentially shifting our characters around because each tile is numbered, making us either go farther along the board or back again. The next player will get their turn as well, and they'll get to go ahead and move. And in this case, they can do that when they normally couldn't as a wild yak. They'll be able to flip over a tile and as well as choose one of these tokens to place on. So for instance, we'll place it just like that. And then they can go ahead and shift. And in this case, shifting like that will probably be beneficial because we're trying to get to the other side of the board. Then once again, we'll go ahead and roll these die here and we'll simply choose uh, the two spaces and place them down. So in this case, it's a light blue and it is a dark blue. And after that, we're good. We moved, uh, we rotated, and we flipped, and back to the player again. We're just going to keep going there back and forth, back and forth. And whenever, like I said, whenever these little areas get filled here, we're going to take these off. We're going to go ahead and put one of these down on this thing here, and we're going to uh, be able to do certain things. Now, additionally, too, whenever we do place one of these guys here on this track, we're going to take one of our tokens here and place it here. Because when we do that, after we get to the third one here, we're going to be able to draw one of these climate cards. And they'll let us do certain things on our turn. And when we draw the cards, we're going to simply remove these. Now, the crocodile is cool because it allows, allows us to draw two of them and choose between them and put the other one on the bottom of the climate deck. Uh, whereas in general, you're just simply going to be placing, uh, drawing one of them and being able to use them. The climate cards here do things like immediately use another player's species trait. So we could use a wild yak trait, which allow us to go through for instance if we were like this we can move across which is pretty useful right or maybe we can immediately uh, let's see maybe we can force any player including yourself to re-roll their disaster die up to two times so being able to use these die to re-roll them to get the spaces we want for this track here pretty cool and that's the basic idea of the game we're just trying to simply traverse this area this barren landscape to get to the spot where we need to be in order to succeed just be aware that earthquakes can cause the board to shift there's certain abilities like for instance we'll take a look at a couple of these flooding will allow us to place blockades these are all the blocking ones and these ones here won't have us move tiles uh, and you have to look at the orientation to see how it's going to affect uh, the board state because it's going to be based on which way these specific colors are facing 
Uh, and it tells us a nice little explanation for each of these different symbols, meaning that tsunamis will basically shift the land. Uh, you'll be able to rotate them, or not rotate them, but uh, uh, switch adjacent spaces. This one here is a cyclone. I'm moving it in a uh, counterclockwise or a clockwise direction once. And then tsunami uh, uh, tornadoes will allow us to basically rotate all of these 90 degrees. But you have to make sure that they are adjacent to this. So in this case, if you want to do a tsunami, you'd look at this. And then you'd say, okay, it's these four spaces, meaning it's these four. And then you'd go ahead and rotate them all just like this. And that's how most of the disaster abilities are going to work, uh, whether they're that or that they are blockade actions. And then, of course, these will be coming off at certain points of the game as well. I think it's at the uh, beginning of your next turn. So it just blocks for certain times. And that's the basic idea for Tremor. Get to the other side of the board before your opponent does. And if you can do that, you're going to win the game. Plays up to four players, and it's got some crazy shenanigans, which we'll talk about above, along with my review of the game. So before we get into my review, let's talk about a couple caveats to the game. The first is, when you're looking at this board here, you're going to see the triangles. And remember, if there is ever a triangle with two pieces that are not yours, you cannot place there, because you need to have the majority so it has to do with eligibility which you're trying to get area control anyway you're not going to want to ignite disasters that are not specifically yours to ignite and remember when this tra track goes to a certain point which if it starts at the seven and when it hits seven it'll go down to five three then it goes back to five back to seven so it moves down and up this track here and that's pretty much the idea when these ignite you're going to be doing the specific abilities based on the color from your player aid the cards the climate cards will be enacted generally on your turn and they have specific rules on them with three different types of cards whether it be oh clear skies tornado and cyclone disasters can't be ignited until your next turn or maybe miscalculation and cancel another player's climate card and place it in the discard pile so like a counter spell basically that can be used against uh not on your turn and then you have agile this turn take an additional scout action for each spirit counter you remove from your spirit track allowing you to basically at a cost gain some kind of benefit the final thing is these oasis tiles they can be blocked and you can be on them when they're blocked it just means that you can't rotate them and it means you cannot also uh go on them but if you're already on them it's okay and additionally you can't mess with it by rotating it when a player is on them so it's a nice way to protect yourself while on the specific tiles there's a lot of different characters in this game and you can choose between um a, a myriad of them there's about 12 of them i believe especially in a two-player game it gives you a lot of benefit i like the marsh crocodile but remember they are it's only going to be as active as you're specifically utilizing the uh the different uh disasters on the track and allowing you to draw two and pick one is a pretty powerful ability almost so as much as the wild yak is able to go through the specific uh, landslide tiles that have debris on them it allows you to kind of traverse the game a little easier the artwork is really really gorgeous just on this game. I actually want to see even more of this stuff presented on, on the cards and whatnot, but it doesn't do a, a very bad job of explaining how the game functions and why it functions a specific way as far as getting from one climate to the other. Uh, the boards are nice or easy to understand, and as you're playing, you're going to pretty much understand the game in maybe one or two rounds, which is nice. The game does play in about an hour or so, and there's a lot of craziness that happens in this game, whether it is concocted craziness because you've chosen to rotate a bunch of tiles that your fellow animals are on, or because earthquakes can happen, shuffling the board up, and moving you to a place you may or may not want to be. One of the negatives I would say is probably you may or may not be doing well and all of a sudden you're doing poorly because the board just shifted in a way you did not want to happen or basically when you get the tiles rotated or switched in some unique way it can really put you in a bad spot but that's kind of the point of the game as well uh i actually the first time we played this game i got three four spaces up to my my goal and then all of a sudden something bad happened and i moved back down and then i got blocked and I, i'm like oh, i can't move ah, it's going crazy but i realized oh well, I can do this and this and this. And depending on the way in which I took my actions is going to change the way in which I get across the board. So there is potentially a little bit of aggravation as you're playing the first time around because you're not going to know what to expect from the game, how the different disasters work, and how you're going to try and avoid having to deal with those certain things. There's also, on the flip side, an opportunity for you to go from one side of the board to the other in a rather quick fashion, utilizing things like the earthquake or things like the cards in your hand as well as your abilities. And if you can manipulate manipulate them correctly and use the correct strategy, you can get across with, mm, I wouldn't say rather ease, but 
a lot better time than I probably had the first time around. As you play the game, the more you learn, the better you get, obviously. And with more players, there's going to come a little bit more craziness because there's going to be more things interacting with the game. You'll be rolling less die as far as placement on the board goes. And you're also not going to be able to predict your opponent's movements as well because the board is going to change as you go about it. There's not a lot of games I've played like Tremor, but there are some that have some, some, some similarities, right? I, I understand that you need to be moving across and whatnot, but what makes this game really unique is just the way in which the tiles are going to move and how you're going to operate your character based on it and its advantages and its disadvantages. I had a pretty good time with this game. Uh, as long as you are prepared to deal with the possibility that things are not going to go the way that you want them to go all the time because of all the craziness that can ensue with this game. There is a bit of luck. A bit of strategy it's kind of all mixed into one if you like games that have these specific traits you're going to enjoy this game if you like the ability to ma manipulate mess with the train and mess with your opponents and their abilities allowing yourself to keep these climate cards and use them when you need to you're going to enjoy it as well i like the fact that it comes with a ton of different options as far as the different characters go and they're all of their own unique abilities and their uh unique different tokens the front and back tokens is a nice unique twist to the game that you actually didn't need to have it could have just been green or whatever but they went the extra leg and gave everybody their own unique icons as well as their own unique abilities that all feel very, very different. There's also a good amount of the climate cards that do a bunch of different things that can affect the game in their own way, as well as protect you from certain things that can be very unbeneficial. And the last thing is, as the game progresses, the faster, the more likely the earthquakes are going to happen. It's very unlikely you're going to get past, probably I would say, going down this board and back up this board more than once, because somebody's going to win at that point, and you'll be able to play again. If you want to take a look at the game down below for the game Tremor, it'll be on Kickstarter, and you can tell me what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this, go ahead and like, comment, and share. Hit that little notification button. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.